uh, you don't have any problem if i am recording this call no sir okay uh, first let me ask you that uh, i need a feedback on my channel so how are you finding my videos uh, the feedbacks on my video are are you finding something missing in my videos or uh, do i need to improve on something because i got a comment uh, from someone uh, on my video that i am not i am not coding while i am uh, doing a video record so because uh, yeah, that yeah. video becomes a little larger when i am coding and i am explaining that code too so uh, do you have some kind of feedback on my videos you are not following yeah 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 hello hello uh-huh. now you are audible yeah i am saying that are there any feed am i audible to you right now yeah 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 you are audible yeah 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 so uh, you actually explain the important part that uh, while you are explaining you are not coding so that too is a little difficult part because sometimes when someone is coding uh, we are watching on that youtube and we got some error so we can actually see that okay we can actually revert back to some of uh, some previous instances and see if our coding is wrong or there is some uh, latest updated uh, dependency okay. but the main problem that i can encounter is that uh, it's just a code and i have to go through every single one of them so for a beginner it's quite hard to grasp something just like spring boot uh, like me because i came I came from a node js background okay so it was little hard to understand okay so uh your feedback would be that i should code and then explain on the videos right all that we kept was uh, for a requirement right a requirement that you shared that was a very good interesting re- requirement i guess the viewers might be interested in uh, learning that so shall we start with that and then we can proceed with your queries yeah yeah so let me uh, share my screen so okay uh, so you wrote me a email that uh, you are using two step verification project right and you want yes. you want uh, to use a particular api to generate an email rather than using an smtp yes. gmail right uh, rather yes. than integrating yes. gmail into your project and sending an email you need a third party email you are using a third party api to send an email right and the third party uh, api yes. url you shared with me that was an aws deployed api right so this was the api link yes so uh yes. before uh, jumping into the solution so you said that you have already solved this issue right yeah it took a lot of time uh, using rest template but okay uh, eventually get on so great 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 a uh, great way to resolve that i'll also share the solution and if 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 you don't mind you can share the solution that what you did to solve this because yeah, will, sure, sure. yeah right so uh, i shared few yeah. steps with you so that uh, the viewers could have the uh, full understanding of the problem that uh, your problem was that we will be registering a user and then we will be uh, logging the user from the credentials right from email id and password yeah. and then uh, right now what we were doing in the project we were generating email by ourselves by integrating gmail and then we were sending the otp to the person right on the registered email Yeah. Right. So now, uh, what we'll do is we'll be uh, using the API that you have given me. Right. Uh, the AWS API. We'll be hitting yes. with the OTP and the email, and G uh, uh, email would be generated for that person. Right. The email ID that we'll be putting here, that uh, person will receive an email with this OTP. Right. And then he needs to uh, put that OTP on the OTP verification screen, and then uh, the verification would be done, and the person would be logged in. Right. so this was the requirement yeah so uh, i would request you that if you can share the screen and if you can uh, uh, show the solution to the viewers that what solution you did because uh, i was assuming yeah. that uh, uh, you might have used some other solution but as you said that you were using rest template to resolve it that is a great solution right uh, we can consider this particular api as another microservice right so this could act as a uh, you can understand it like a spring boot project that has been deployed on aws and we need to hit this api of that spring boot project so that could uh, that spring boot project could act as a microservice for our project right so if we want to interact between two microservices then we can do it by using rest template right 
so uh, this concept i have already covered in my uh, video of uh, microservice interaction but i would request you now you can share the screen and please show the solution to the viewers yes yeah. Uh, first of all, sir, uh, I didn't know that it was uh, a microservice. I just did it. But you should know microservice. Okay. I'm just gonna... No, look, uh, if somebody has made an API and I have de deployed somewhere, right? So that API is made on some architecture, right? So be it a Spring Boot project or a Node project or any other project, right? So that is a project, a separate project, a small microservice, you can say it. And when we interact between, so our project is also a microservice as we are making on Spring Boot, right? So if we want to interact with two uh, interaction between the two microservices, then we need to use REST template. Or if you have another option, it could be like we can use uh, Kafka to perform our operations. But uh, that microservice should also be integrated with Kafka, right? So now so you can. This please, is how I use a REST template. Yeah, please. Can you? Explain? I think I have shared my screen. Yeah, yeah, you have, but uh, can you explain the code as well? So that would be a great. Uh... Yeah, so, so so this was the API that we were using to integrate. Mm -hmm. uh, in the original API that I sent you, there was. Uh, let me show you the full API. Yeah, so uh, this is not the full API. There is some OTP and email which I had actually segmented. So that I can use that as string URL. Okay. Just let me find it. So this was the completed API. Okay. Here you can see this uses Amazon Lambda service, and uh, this is how uh, it stores OTP and the user provided email. This email is actually registered in the database, and the OTP is already produced. So it does not produce your OTP. It actually retrieves the OTP from the database, which uh, is generated here as a random pin. Okay. So here yeah, the mathematical formula is simple. So this is uh, the OTP generated here. So in the OTP class, I have uh, written random pin, which is the six-digit random number that is generated whether when the URL is hit. And email user dot get email, which is actually the email which is already being registered in the database. It fetches that. Okay. Now this is the REST template. And yeah, and uh, REST template, and it, it's a basic REST template. Nothing more to see here. And it saves that in the user entity right here. Okay. And now it's just an if as if uh, the, it is if it finds it correct or not. Okay. That's the okay. try and catch. Great, great, great. Uh, Vivek, uh, can I uh, highlight my, more points on this? Uh, so uh, yes, sure. Just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Just to uh, clarify that uh, user repo dot save method has nothing to do with the above code of using REST template, right? So a REST template acts, yeah, as a, acts as a template class wherein we can interact with some other microservice, right? We can hit that endpoint of that microservice, right? So uh, when we are preparing that API URL, it's the URL part uh, leaving the other parameters, that is the email ID and the OTP, right? So that email ID and OTP are generated, right? So user dot get email, so user is already registered in our database. So we are fetching that user email ID from there. And then the OTP is the random OTP that we are generating above. And then we are appending with the URL. So we are appending the uh, API URL with the URL. And then we are sending, uh, uh, we are calling the method get for object that will return a result of string, right? So uh, get for object and we are passing the exact URL uh, included the OTP and email. And then we get the result that the email is being generated and the OTP would be sent to the user, right? So that was great, uh, Vivek. Right. Uh, you solved it by yourself. Great and great uh, that you explained the solution.